Okay, ports in Libria and MS. This is where we start to really unleash the power of what Libria and MS can do. I will tell you, when I first started using Libria and MS, uh, and I figured out how ports worked, uh, I was totally blown away. I just knew my life was about to get a whole lot easier. And it really wasn't even so much that I could see all these stats, uh, you know, graphs and, and different uh, stats here and uh, different values, is that I could just find ports a lot easier now. Uh, when you start getting into the hundreds of thousands of ports, you can understand that finding one port and all of that mess is uh, going to be a little bit of a challenge, but Libria and MS really, really makes it easy. So... Um, up until now, we've kind of been talking about devices and uh, alerting on devices and uh, uh, just kind of... Uh taking the device as a whole and a lot of the times the device really isn't the problem um you know a switch running out there will probably run for years perfectly fine and never have an issue provided the power is okay uh so you're usually having problems with ports and maybe sensors on the device uh and so we need to start uh drilling down a little bit more and uh ports are one of the main things you look at uh because you look at there for bandwidth utilization uh errors if it's bouncing um all sorts of different things you can see on their packet counters. So ports are added in Libri MS just like anything else is added. Uh, first by adding a device and when you add a device that discovery script and polling script runs on it and that discovery script will grab all the interfaces on a device. Uh, you can see what interfaces that discovery script runs by uh, just clicking on your device. So all devices and I'll click on my device here. We'll have a bunch of tabs up here and ports will be the one we want to click on. So if we go through the list here every single one of these rows is a different port that was discovered on the device. Uh, this is an HP switch, so there's not that many ports on here, like 10, I believe, but uh, every single one of these rows is a port, and obviously you can uh, see some stats on uh, the port of every single one. Uh, now, if you go through your list, you're going to occasionally run on ports that don't have any values, really. And uh, you might think that's a problem with Libri and MS, but it's really just a problem that the device did not send us any values for this port. It told us that there was a port there. Uh, it had a name, uh, maybe even a type, a MAC address, uh, all sorts of different stuff, but it just doesn't send us counters for that port. And there's really nothing we can do about that. We can't make graphs out of nothing. So uh, Libri and MS does keep the port in there, and, and you could disable this if you wanted to. To, but you know sometimes there's other information in here you might want like the MAC address or uh, you know maybe there's an IP address associated with it so they keep them in here just so you can have that uh, to look at also so if you wanted to remove these uh, interfaces from showing up in this list uh, you just didn't want it and and there's going to be other interfaces that show up in here maybe not on this device but other devices you have out there you'll find interfaces where uh, they're pretty much pointless you know, there's no reason for them to be in there uh, so you can edit the device uh, go to port settings and you will see all the ports here uh, one row is a port and you'll see all of them here and now I, I have actually gone in here ahead of time and actually del uh, deleted a couple or uh, disabled the polling on a couple of them and all that really does is just uh, ignore this interface from ever being polled or discovered or really showing up anywhere or alerting on it or anything really uh, you're just going to basically uh, disable it altogether because these these switch loopback interfaces, I have no idea what they do in the town anyway, so uh, I don't need them to be bothered. But if you wanted to turn off that default VLAN in this other one, you could also turn off these two uh, and hit save here. Uh, if you go back into your overview or ports, uh, you will see that now you just have the 10 interfaces. These are actually all the 10 interface Ethernet interfaces on the switch. So for the rest of this, I'm just going to enable all these ports just so we have a little bit more data to play with. Uh, we'll enable all of them, why not? Okay, let's go back into ports. And this is uh, good to see an individual device, uh, the ports on this device, but a lot of the times you kind of... Uh, you want to know, uh, you, you can't really filter on a port here, you know, if you had like a 48 port switch or, uh, you know, a big core switch with hundreds of ports on it, it's going to be hard to look through this list and find exactly what port you want. Uh, you could do like a control F and find in the browser and you might, you might get lucky that way, but uh, there's actually a better way to kind of filter on ports and that is in the port menu here at the top. And uh, if you go to ports, all ports, this will list every single port on every single device you have in Librian MS. So if you go down here to the bottom, you'll see the total number of ports that you have at uh, your uh, monitoring right now. Uh, so 
Unlike the other screen we had, uh, this is pretty much the same setup as one rose, one port. Uh, and you can see that here's our device that this port is on. And obviously the device is going to change as we move down to different devices. Uh, the port numbers will change. So if you wanted to filter just on one device, kind of like we did in the other screen, under the device, you can just filter on the IP address. Now, this uh, host name IP address list here will get unmanageable after a while because, you know, if you have hundreds and two hundreds and thousands of devices, uh, it's going to be too long to scroll through. So luckily, they, you can just put the host name in here also. Uh, so that would do the same thing. Uh, so now that you've uh, filtered on just a host, then you can just filter on other things too. Maybe you just want to see the 100 meg ports on this uh, switch only. Uh, so now you're just looking at the 100 meg ports on just this switch. Um, so, uh, and, and you know, there's other things here. Maybe I just want to see the down ports on this switch. Uh, maybe I want to see other ports or just Ethernet ports on this switch. So if we go back to, uh, let's just reset this. Uh, 1.2, we want to see just Ethernet ports, because, you know, these other ones are like software loopback and prop virtual. I don't care about those. I just wanted the Ethernet ports, so we can just filter on the Ethernet ports um, also. So this really becomes really helpful when you have a uh, switch with, yeah, or a device with tons of other interfaces, and you're just looking for specific types. Uh, you can go through there. Uh, port types I'll come back to in a second. Uh, port description, you're basically just searching on this field here. Uh, any text in this field, you're just searching for uh, any text in these fields here. And uh, this other one here, location, is basically filtering uh, the devices on a location. So uh, if you reset this here, uh, you're, when you, by default, when you go to ports, all ports, you're seeing every single port in Liberated Mess. But if you just want to see ports in like a specific location, you would just hit that, hit search. And now you're just searching for the uh, ports in just a specific location, uh, whatever this location is all the devices in this location and all the ports in this location. And that becomes helpful when you want to see like, oh, we're really working to get this site 100%. Maybe we want to upgrade this site to one gig everywhere. So show me all the 100 meg ports at this site. Uh, there you go. Uh, it just was like that. Um, and, and, you know, there's all sorts of different uh, ways you can combine this to see different stats. So the cool, the real, the really cool thing about this is when you get into these port types. Now, this port type is really just a little tag you put in the description here. Uh, it's right at the beginning here. It's uh, whatever you want. It could be any name you want. Uh, there's really no limit on what you should call it. Uh, it's whatever makes sense to you. Um, so, for example, phones is a good one because a lot of people deal with uh, VoIP phones. Uh, they're on people's desks. Uh, so you have this port connected to a phone. Uh, so I would put a phone tag on here, and maybe I'll put some other descriptions in here and some other things. Um, you know, while we're at this, uh, the way you format these descriptions on your switches uh, and devices are going to matter a lot to Librium MS. You really need to figure out how to keep this format. You can write your own interface format. Uh, Farzer to uh, get this data out of here. So if you have it like in a different format, uh, like maybe these brackets mean something else besides a circuit ID or uh, something else like that, you can you can do that. But you really want to you really want to kind of structure it in a way that a script will can get it very easily. Uh, and you know you do this because if I put it in here, this is a, the default format that uh, Librian MS wants port descriptions as. If I put this in here, like stuff in this curly bracket here, this will get its own value in the database under called a value called circuit ID. Uh, there's a, this, this cur, was this, a round bracket? This is uh, just a notes field, just generic notes field, so you can put whatever you want in here. And this is like a speed uh, field in the database. So these are actually getting their own section in the database. The whole thing is stored on uh, a one field, and then all these other things are stored there, including this port type. So uh, once you get, so you really got to structure your, for this to be a real benefit, you need to really structure your port descriptions like this way or find a way that makes sense to you. Um, but let's just say we did all this because we're starting brand new and we're just going to follow what the best practices are for Librium MS. Uh, we created these phone tags here. So I can filter on phones here. And now I'm just looking at all the ports that have phones attached to them uh, in, Lib in, all, in all the devices in Librium MS. So uh, this, you know, this comes really helpful. If you have like 20,000 phones that you have that you're monitoring, um, you know, you could just sit your phone and just instantly see every single port across all your switches uh, that have phones attached to them. 
them. Uh, you know, and then you could say like, okay, we're going to upgrade all our phones to one gig. So then you just filter on hundred meg ports and now you see all of your phones that are just at a hundred megs. Um, so it's, it's a very helpful tool to, uh, to, to do this on. And, you know, a lot of the times when I say it's easy just to find stuff, uh, just to know where it's at, is that if I got a call that said, hey, this phone, uh, extension 1201 at uh, some location is down, uh, can you look at the port? Well, without this, I'm going to have to go and maybe look up some spreadsheets or look around for the MAC address or just kind of know what the IP scheme was there. Or, you know, I, I guess I could still have the devices and go into the device SSH and find the port. But if I have my port descriptions set up correctly, and and you should, uh, you could just do something like, okay, he was calling from 221 Libri NMS Av, okay, and he was calling about a phone, and his extension was 1201. Okay, I found him. There he is. He's on this switch, on this port. Uh, this is what his bandwidth has been doing. Uh, here's some stats about the switch, the CPU, traffic, overall traffic, memory. Uh, you can see he's linked up at a gig. He's really not doing much, and that's probably normal for a phone. Uh, it's Ethernet, and you can just see all these stats right here. I mean, and you can click on this port and tick it instantly to see all the detailed stats, you know, packet counters and unicast packets. Uh, so you, you can drill down super, super fast with uh, these these port tags here. And, and I say use these port tags because you might be like, well, you could just just search for 1201, you know, uh, maybe just this location in 1201. But if you didn't have that port tag in there, uh, look, this you were just searching the description. So this you're searching this whole thing here. And 1201 was a circuit ID in this uh, port two here. So while you, I mean, in this case, it wasn't that bad. There was only two ports. You could have figured it out pretty quickly. But in a larger, larger setup, you know, you might still return if you're just searching for 1201. Uh, and, and maybe your site's really big. You might have a bunch of ports that return something with 1201. So if you know you're looking at just like a peering uh, connection or a firewall connection, it is really, really helpful to put these in here. So a lot of the times uh, when we're dealing with switches, they'll return the description you put in the switch, and Libri NMS will put that in here for you. So you don't, you're not really going in here and editing these descriptions in Libri NMS. You really want to set these in the switches themselves. Uh, so either when you initially configure it, or maybe write some script after it's all said and done, and and describe all the ports uh, automatically. Um, but whatever you do, you you kind of want them in there uh, in the switch because. That should be like your source of truth, I guess you want to call it. You, you want to know that, um, you know, you set it there and it propagates to everywhere else. You know, I don't want to have to update the switch's descriptions and Libri NMS's descriptions because uh, they'll get out of sync uh, faster than anything. Uh, they'll, they'll just, uh, one day it'll just be all messed up and you won't even know which ones are real anymore because you don't know which one was the last one updated. So, uh, yeah, it's better to keep one source of truth. Uh, you just need one place where you know that's what it is and that's 100% what it's going to be. Now, there are some devices like PFSense that they do kind of allow you to set a description on the port but they don't report that description back in um, in uh, SNMP form. So you have to go in here and actually edit these ports manually, unfortunately, looking at UPSense. Uh, so if you could just hit the edit button here on these ports, like if, say, this was this for, uh, maybe it wasn't described, but I know this is my WAM port on my firewall at home. I could just go in here, and uh, it basically takes you a shortcut to the port setting page under that device. And here's is where you would set all the descriptions for these. Now there was one other kind of port type we had here. Um, when we when we went to all ports, we saw all our ports here, and there was one here called peering. And uh, if you notice on the ports list here, there's a couple one here: customer, transit, peering, peering plus transit core. Uh, these are kind of like default ones that Libri and MS came up with, and they're they're when you click on them, the output is a little bit different than this. So you know the the exact same uh, phone or port tag applies. You just put a little thing here and a a colon, period, colon, and you, and you can search for them the same way in here. So there's really no difference in this field uh, about a peering port or a customer port or any kind of custom port you make, like a phone port. But when you click on this page uh, and click on peering, it'll actually display a bunch of graphs for you. So this first graph here is actually the total uh, of all these graphs below here. I only have one peering port, so it's only showing up one graph here. But if you had another one with those peering tag in it, you would see the next port and the next port and the next port. And this 
graph at the top here would give you an overall bandwidth of all those ports together. So maybe you have like 30 or 40 internet connections and you just kind of want to see what they're all doing combined. This would give it to you right there as long as you had those ports described as that peering. Now there's actually a little bug in here. I just noticed that uh, this should have columns that say like uh, interface and speed and circuit ID and uh, you know notes. So uh, they, can, they must be a bug somewhere and they for messed that up but it, it's okay. Uh, we know what it is. So port types really, really become powerful when we start talking about alerting. So if we go into our alert rules here, we can create another alert rule. And we're just going to call this phone. And we're going to make this ports dot port description type. Now, remember when I was talking about the descriptions and you know, how you format them specially? These are the uh, uh, special locations in the database for these uh, fields. So when I put them in those curly brackets, that's the circuit ID. I can actually just alert just maybe based on a circuit ID. So if I put this in here, it's going to have the circuit ID of every peering port. So if I want to just say if if, I, I don't know. I want all the circuit IDs that start with a one, you know, uh, to alert on. Uh, you know, you just, you got to imagine you can get pretty creative uh, on what you can alert on and be very, very specific. So uh, just keep that in mind there. But, you know, generally that might be a little too fine-tuned for most people. So you can go to port type equals phone because this is the port type here. Uh, and we'll just hit save on this. Now this should alert with any port type that is phone. There you go. So now we are alerting on the phones on this device. In order to see the interfaces in the web GUI, you just expand this. And it's actually not very descriptive. And I wish they would have put the if alias in here. Um, and that's usually the field in SNMP that contains your description, your user description. So we can see here that we have one and two ports. And this is port 1. I guess if you hover over it, you can see the name. And port 4. Now, that was kind of pointless because the ports are up. So, we, obviously, we don't want to do that. We want to say if all phones and then... That was probably right there. Port down. Yes. Save. So, now... This will only alert me when uh, the phone ports are down. And that's kind of helpful because if another group or somebody took care of the phones and you don't care about them, you can now just alert any phone that goes down just to them. Uh, so that's why it's really cool to have your uh, f uh, port tags uh, or, or port types rather uh, set correctly. So there's one more uh, part of this I wanted to kind of go over real quick, and that is this little bar at the top here. Uh, by default, it's just set to basic, but you can click this detail button here, and you can actually see more stats per line. Um, so that might be helpful. So maybe you're having a problem with a location and a bunch of packets, and you don't know where they're coming from. You could just hit that details and then just sort it by packets. Uh, and then you can see that this port is generating the most packets in, or this port's generating the most packets out. Uh, so this that, that is pretty handy and uh, you know it's actually really cool here is that they you can actually display graphs in here too so uh, let's just say we want to look at all our Ethernet ports uh, all the ones that are up uh, and these two ports will be fine those will be fine we can do bits right here so now I just saw all the graphs uh, the bandwidth for all those ports in there um, that and that comes kind of handy when you do something like oh let's look at our firewall ports uh, we want to see all our firewall ports bandwidth so these are all the ports now they don't really put a good description in here of the port and I wish they would I guess you could hover over it and see it but they really need to have like some kind of a line in here that tells you the port description or the port name or a bunch of that information uh, so you'd kind of just screenshot this page if you wanted to and uh, uh, send it off in a report or something but, you know, there's also other ones like here, like unicast packets and non-unicast and errors. Uh, but, but it is pretty helpful. And, you know, also you had the errors here, too. When you had details, you could look at all the errors. So you could sort all your ports by errors. That's just a kind of a nice little uh, feature there that uh, kind of gets overlooked a lot. At least I overlook it a lot. But So I'm going to end the video there. Uh, there's probably a little bit more I could talk about with ports, but it's nothing uh, too critical. That 
covers the majority of it. Uh, so I will probably post a wrap up video when I'm pretty tired of making all these videos about uh, anything I misspoke about or want to clarify. Again, thank you for watching.